especially for, for young people, uh, technology is taking, taking us further and further from the natural environment. I mean, we can create a, a virtual environment for ourselves and, and, and kids grow up. Uh, parents, you know, hesitant to let them play outside or only, only under very sort of limited circumstances, watching videos, playing computer games. Do you worry that that is going to sort of deaden this sense of affinity with nature, which is, I imagine, a big hope for preserving it? Yeah, the, um, as I think most of you would know, uh, we are uh, witnessing a uh, withdrawal of people, and particularly young people, away uh, from experience in the natural environment. And uh, this is evidenced by, um, it may be evidenced by the fact that the, uh, this is something I just read, the attendance at our national park has leveled off and maybe dropping a little bit. And what's happening is that kids can uh, experience what is thought to be the awe and shock and wonder of nature just by a few keystrokes. And when you watch Jurassic Park, the movie, uh, what you are doing is mainlining. You know, you're getting a sort of thrill of the Paleolithic hunter uh, in complete safety uh, in extreme, so that you know you can break down a dinosaur or you can uh, go a few feet and see something other wonderful in, in this one. So you, you might ask, well, what's the point then of getting them out in nature uh, where they'll have to hunt uh, a full day before they could see a, a mammal larger than a chipmunk or uh, they would have to learn uh, some tricks of hunting and tracking in order to, um, uh, to find a, uh, a salamander. And yet the thrill is there when you take kids out and they have that experience. What's going on? Well, I think what's going on is that whereas um, the experience of seeing things in simulations for computers and mass entertainment is audio-visual, whereas uh, the experience of actually going into nature on your own is what we call kinesthetic, kinesthetic. That is, it's hands-on, it's tactical, you know, to pick up a frog and, and experience it, you know, as an entity with all sorts of qualities and its olfactory. Uh, but then beyond that, comes the very essential human experience of kinesthetic uh, input, of actually handling, of actually experience a walk of two miles to look for something, and then to be able to uh, explore with the hands to expose it, pick it up, and then let kids mess around a little bit, that is, put a frog in a jar, or collect black widow spiders the way I did. My, my, my parents were very careless. Uh, <laughs> but basically, I think you all know what I'm talking about. This may be combined with good science education that is nature-oriented and biology-oriented, uh, could be a big piece of uh, a child's experience. Could we not sort of satisfy those kinds of impulses and give, give kids those kinds of experiences with a few parks and zoos. Um, you ask what about the rest of life? Well, there are thousands and thousands of species that, that um, we never see, we don't even know about, which are dying, dying off. And presumably, um, most of them don't affect our, our lives. But they do. <laughs> they do. <Yeah. laughs> uh, Tell us, please. Yeah, that's right. Well, first of all, let's dispose of the, uh, the notion, you know, that you can get this experience in a zoo or, mm -hmm. or botanical garden. Uh, they are wonderful places. And uh, I think there should be uh, part of every child's growing experience, especially if the child is allowed to wander and explore a bit and not just be taken on a guided tour. Um, but they represent on a microscopic fraction of the number of species that are on Earth. And these species, which are hard to see or hard to find often, 
are vital to our existence, to their existence. And yet, we know so very little about them. Uh, to, uh, to take my favorite example, if you take a, a gram of soil, that's equivalent to a pinch of salt, uh, and uh, have it on your hand, there are approximately one billion bacteria resident there. And uh, they represent between five and 6,000 species. You can say virtually all of which are unknown to science. Well, that gives you a sense of the degree to which the world is, is unknown, the living world. This is an unknown planet, a little known, virtually unexplored planet as far as life is concerned. The same is true for uh, many of the visible organisms, fungi, 60,000 species known, estimated over 1.5 million species out there, and so on. And they are vital to our existence. The soil, as I know I'm preaching to people who are probably some who are more expert on this than I am, but let me say it anyway. The soil is alive. It's not just quartz green with bugs running around in it. It is a living film that's constantly renewing itself and constantly driving through these little creatures uh, the, the great materials and energy cycles that we, our lives, depend on. So when uh, you treat that as an alien world in any way whatsoever, even by implication by a visit to a zoo or a botanical garden, uh, you are making, I think, a dangerous mistake. Um, the worst thing you can do to a child, in my opinion, is take them on a uh, walk, uh, a hike through a botanical garden uh, where there are the names of the tree on the side. Uh, and um, as Rachel Carson once said, so true, she said, take the child to the seashore, turn her loose with a, I don't know how to her exact word, but with a pail and tell her to go explore the tide pool. Don't tell her the names of any of these things. Let her find them, let her touch them, let her uh, bring them to you, talk about them, and then you give them her a name. Uh, and the, um, the squeezed in lives of children who are taken occasionally to a park like that or uh, a zoo to see the label species is just all part of what I like to call, and I'm sorry, I'm not I hope I'm not offending anyone, the soccer mom syndrome. <laughs> and I believe that soccer moms are the greatest enemy in uh, <laughs> modern life of, uh, of natural history and of a proper uh, biological ed uh, uh, education. Okay, I, I have at least a few sympathizers. <laughs>